L'david Hashem Ori to David Hashem Ori Hashem is my light. V'yishi and he's my salvation. Mimi ira who should I fear? Maoz chayai. He is the strength of my life. So interesting enough, it says three different things here, which really directed is the same exact thing. Ori, my light, Yishi, my salvation, and Mimi, and Mos uh, Chai is the strength of my life. So what is what are all these three things about? So we learned about Ori is referring to Rosh Hashanah, Yishi is referring to Yom Kippur. That we learned. But even more so, I know I have people online today that like a little Kabbalah, that enjoy a little esoteric teachings of the Torah. So I'll go through that a little bit. I did a little uh, research last night into Kabbalah, how we can translate Ori Yishi and Mimi Ira. And uh, I'm, excuse me, Mos Chai, the strength of my life. Again, Ori is my life. Yishi is my salvation. Ma'oz Chai is the strength of my life. So, our Kabbalah tells us as follows. Ori is referring, my light is referring to the Nishama, to the soul. What connection is there to the light and the soul? It says, Kiner Hashem, the candle of Hashem, Nishmat Adam, is the soul of a man, of a person. Right? So, we see the Nishama a lot is compared to light. So if we have the neshama, we need something parallel to the neshama, and that's yishi. Yishi, my salvation, refers to, it says in Kabbalah, the parallel to the neshama is the guf. The guf is the body. We need both the body and the soul to be subservient to God. Some people, says it says in Kabbalah, are subservient war more with their souls, they feel it, they, 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 you know, they meditate, but when it comes to doing the actual mitzvahs with their body, you know, they're not that great at that. And then you have the opposite. You have those people that, yeah, they do mitzvahs, it becomes rote to them, but sometimes they just don't feel it in their soul. They don't have that feeling to serve God as they should. So comes the next two words, Ma'oz Chai, the strength of my life, in the same verse, and that is talking about when we put the Ori and the Yishi, the soul and the body together, that is the ultimate service of God. Serving together with our bodies and with our souls. What does that mean? That means our souls have to feel it, and our bodies not only have to do it, but always do it with a different feeling of the soul. It's not good enough to be rote. We do it, you know, we all do the same mitzvahs. Imagine something. My, my famous example is we all daven, same words, same thing. Uh, all women like candles. Uh, we all put on tefillin. But each one of us do it in a different way with different thoughts, right? We all daven, I, I was speaking this morning at, at Shacharit, I was speaking about Shimona Esrei. We all daven the same Shimona Esrei, believe it or not, the same words. When someone daven Shimona Esrei a little longer and the Chazan has to wait for them, or wants to wait for them, it's only right sometimes. Why? Because believe it or not, if we look into Kabbalah and we look into different holy books, right from the Arizal, there are certain meditations on every single word of Shemona Esrei. So the first meditation is have the, the meaning of the words in mind. The, the translation of every word, that's why it's very important to have an English sitter with you in case you don't understand certain words. But now some of us who do understand the words, there are certain meditations we have. Certain meditations, believe it or not, on names of angels, when we're davening Shimon Esri. Certain meditations, Kabbalistic meditations. Certain meditations, personal meditations. And these are all different things 
what we have to have in mind when we say Baruch and Atta and Hashem's name, right? It's an unbelievable thing. And then when we mention Hashem's name, don't forget, we have different forms of Hashem's name, right? You have Hashem, which is Yud, the He, the Vav and the He, right? Which we don't pronounce it when we don't have to. You have Elohim, you have Elokeinu. Each one of those names have a different meditation. So, I, it's an unbelievable thing. But if we take our body and we take our soul and put them together, that is the ultimate strength to overcome all of our troubles, all of our trials and tribulations. That's the ultimate faith in God. To put everything into reality. According to the book called Tanya, okay, uh, written by Rabbi Shner Zaman of Liadi, Ori is talking about Chachma. If you remember in Tanya, we learned about 10 different manifestations of God. The first ones are Chachma, Bina, and Das. So Chachma is talking about the thought, right? That is Ori, my light, like a, a bolt of lightning, the light, right? The light switch goes on and off just by a switch, right? That's Ori, my light. Yishi, my salvation is now I'm starting to contemplate and thinking about it. Ma is Chayai, the last one is the strength of my light that's putting the Chachma, the Bina into reality, into actuality. Taking the thought, the idea, taking the contemplation of the idea, how to put it together, and doing something with it, right? You want to build a building? You, I think about, oh, I, I, I want to build a building with a certain kitchen and how to cook and two sinks and yada, 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 right? And, and that's a good thought. But now I have to put this kitchen into a building plan. Once I put it into the building plan, but now we start building the house with the kitchen. That's the action. And that's Chachma, Bina, Das is putting it all into action. And that's Ori, my light, the idea. Yishi, the building plans. Let's start contemplating. Ma'oz Chayai, the strength of my light, is talking about what? Is talking about action. Building the building itself. Putting our, our potentiality, our potential into reality. That's what it's all about. You know, I, I, you keep on hearing this from me in my sermons, in my lectures, in my Debrei Torah, on my Zooms, on my Thursday nights, I'm speaking about potential a lot. And the reason being is because it's brought down in Kabbalah, in all the esoteric teachings about the month of Elul, that our, we have such potentials deep inside of us, and now we have to start bringing them out so they can come out and, and be manifested in some shape or form to the new year. We can't have this new year coming and being the same type of year that we had this year. Everybody makes resolutions. We all, wanna, we all want a, a great year, right? We all give each other a blessings for a sweet year, a healthy year, a peaceful year, da 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 da, da right? That's nice. Talk is cheap. We have to make, do something about it. We have to do something to make it a better year. And we have to do something to make our year, to make it personal, to make it our year and make that better. How do we do that? To take our potential and not only talk about it, to realize I said this on Shabbos, I'm going to say it again because I talk in my sleep to myself about this because it's so important. People think when a person sins, he's a bad person. God doesn't look at it that way. And if God doesn't look at it that way, we shouldn't look at it that way. A person sins, he, made, he did a chait. You know what a chait means? It's a sin. But do you know a chait does not mean sin? If you look through Tanakh, chait means a slingshot. <laughs> so what's the difference? What's the comparison between a slingshot, right? 
and a, and a sin. Because many times when you take a slingshot, because of a, a, a lack of focus or concentration, you miss the target, right? That's the same thing with a sin. A person sins because he gets distracted and he has a lack of focus, concentration, and education. He's not bad. A person is born so good, so pure, so sincere. And we don't understand how pure we really are. And what Elul is about is saying, let's focus a little better. Let's concentrate on who we are a little better. Because once we get, like I've said for three weeks, once you can relate with yourself as a better person, you're relating to God better. You know, if you look at people, and it's a fact, I deal with so many of these people for years. Take a person that's depressed, never sees good in life. All he's saying is, I am not this, I am not that, I am not this, I am not that, I am not good looking, I am not smart, I am not a genius, I am not rich enough, I am not, I am not, I am not, I am not. Do you know, you'll, you'll be shocked. Do you know who used the same exact lingo? Moshe Rabbeinu. <laughs> Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, Holy Moses, King of the Jews. He used the exact same lingo. When? The burning bush. God comes to him and says, Okay, Mo, take your shoes off. I got a job for you. Go down to Paro, go down to Egypt and say, Paro, God sent me to tell you, let my people go. And Moshe Rabbeinu says, I'm not fluent enough to speak. I stutter. I'm not good enough. I'm not fluent enough. I'm not. I can't. I'm not. I can't. I can't. I can't. He can't. And God says, you can. And he says, I, 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 I really can't because I stutter. And Hashem says, you're going. And it took a week at least. More than that for Moshe Rabbeinu. He said, take my brother. No, I'm taking you. You're the one. Okay? And he says, you don't have to worry. You, can, you don't have to be a great speaker. But you have that potential in you to be a leader. To be the one, the leader. And that's why I will be with you. You're not going to be alone. People that are miserable also always and depressed. I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. If we take the words I am and not, and not use the word not, I am smart, I am good. Ah, oh, then we have a whole different perspective. And I can become better. That's what Elul is all about. Realizing, by the way, if people think they're bad people, their confession that they do on Yom Kippur, on all these confessions, nine times we confess, mean nothing. And I said this last week, and I'm going to say it again. The reason we sing confession, right? Like on Yom Kippur, if you remember, ah, yeah, 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 oh, shamnu, bogano, and then all of a sudden we're confessing our faiths. And then we start singing again. The You're going to hear that Ahoyam Kibber. Why? Why are we singing? We should be yelling, screaming, crying, confessing. Because the only way we can confess is with Simcha, with joy, to realize one thing that we really are good people. And we really have that potential. So now I can, now that I know I have that potential, I can tell Hashem, I made a mistake. My focus wasn't right, my, 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 my thoughts weren't right, my meditations weren't right, my distractions were different, I had proud, whatever it was. Now, Hashem, I want to become better. I want to make this Hebrew year, right, a better year. 
for me personally. And if I make it better for me, I make it better for my spouse. And if I make it better for my spouse, I make it better for my kids. If I make it better for my kids, I make it better for my entire family and for the world and for my neighbors. But it all starts with who I am with my potential and taking my potential and making it a reality. So we have to remember that and that's why we say this chapter in the mother of Elul. Because it's all about taking Ori, our light. What do you mean like, Rabbi, my whole year has been dark. No, 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 no. So you know what you do? Light a little match. And that little light will put a, push away a lot of darkness. Transform that darkness into Ori, my light. Transform those problems into Yishi, my salvations. May God personal. You are my light. You are my salvation. And as it says in Kabbalah, take your Chachma, Bina, and Das. Take your potential. Take your strengths. And do what with them? Make them into Ma'os Chayai. Strength of my life. Realize one thing. God is in charge and He's with you. Sometimes He's holding your hand and sometimes He's carrying you on the shoulders and sometimes He's letting go of you. Imagine one thing. I know it's been a while that we all had little kids. But when we have little kids and they're learning to walk, what do we do? We get down on our knees. He said, come, come, come to mommy, come to mommy, come to mommy. And as soon as he's about to come to mommy, mommy moves back and he falls. And we do this over and over again. Why? Because it, it gave them confidence and strength to walk on their own. Hashem is the same way with us sometimes. <clears throat> and Elul he's saying, come to Tati. Come to Tati. And we move back sometimes and you know what? We're coming, ah, and he moves back. And something else happens, and something else happens. But what we believe very strongly is that all our trials and all our tribulations are ways to make us stronger. We cannot become strong without a trial or tribulations. Can you imagine if something goes well for a person, I mean, he's on top of the world, it's going well, and everything's great. He doesn't appreciate his goodness as much as someone who is, had a rough, and now things turned around. As someone, he was blind, God forbid, for a while, right? And now he can see the light, right? He appreciates the light a lot more than somebody that just couldn't sleep, see while he was sleeping, and he opened up his eyes the next morning. Why? Days went by, it was dark for him. And now light, wow. Same thing, we have to realize one thing. There is light at the end of every dark tunnel. There is light and there is a salvation and there is a strength of my life. What we have to do is transform all our personal darknesses, all our personal problems into salvations, our personal darknesses into light. And when we put the Chachma and the Bina together, the idea and the wisdom, the contemplation together, we'll get our Das. We'll be able to take our, our darkness, transform it to our light. Ori, not or, not light. Ori, my light. Yishi, my salvation. Mo's Chayai, my strength of my life. God is mine. He's not only ours. He's my personal God. And Elul is about making all this personal. We get so wrapped up in our offices and our businesses and our, and our, with our family problems and our kids. And we get so wrapped up a whole year. We forget about making God sometimes personal. Rosh Hashanah is coming. We have now the 30-day warning. Elul's coming. We have three week warning now. Now's the time to start making everything mine, personal mine.
Because when it becomes mine, it also becomes ours. When you become better, you make the world better, your family better. When you become more spiritual, everyone else becomes more spiritual around you. When we are miserable, guess what? No one wants a kvetch. No one wants to be around a kvetch. No one wants to be around miserable people. No one wants to be around depressed people. But if we make God ours, there's no way that we can't be besimcha with joy with every mitzvah we do. Every davening we daven. Every word we say, Baruch Atta Hashem, blessed are you God. And you bless Him, you don't say, Oh, your highness, before we call God king and before we call him ruler of the world, we say, Baruch Atta, you. You're my buddy, you're my friend. Anila Dodi, you're my lover, you are mine. Ori Viyishi, you're my light, you're my salvation. And that, my friends, is what Elul is all about. May we all have a beautiful, sweet, healthy year. And now's the time to improve our lives, ourselves, and put everything into actuality. No more talk. We got to do it. Have a nice day, everyone.